get to work. Kevin Smith's lo-fi directorial debut, Clerks, took my generation by storm back in 1994. We felt like somebody had seen us and had put our petty frustrations on screen in a way that was heartfelt but equally entertaining. What do you mean there's noise? You mean I gotta drink this coffee hot? Anyone who worked at a lame service or retail job was Dante Hicks, and we all had friends like Randall and the drug dealers Jay and Silent Bob. Clerks was filmed on a shoestring budget with a few of the director's friends. Kevin Smith really lucked out here in that his inexperienced cast could deliver exactly what the film needed. My love for you is like a truck bouncer. Would you like some making balzaka? <laughs> Did he say making? Dante is handsome and earnest, invested in his self imposed cycle of misery. Caitlin Bree is the sexiest thing in New Jersey. Randall is that annoying friend you love but you can't reform. And Jason Mewes as Jay is completely off the rails, delivering every line with playful lunacy. Pack her ass, my good man. Time to kick back, drink your beers, and smoke your weed. The extraordinarily low budget actually creates a fantasy for the viewer. Not only are these middle-class wastoids people just like us. She's pretty young, huh? 22, just like us. But the director and crew are as well. Actors get recycled for different roles like college or community theater. The camera work isn't fancy, there's no special effects, and the film stock is rough. We could imagine making this movie ourselves. We didn't, but we could easily imagine it. The movie is structured as a series of vignettes, mostly about humiliations that come into Dante's day. Rude customers and girl problems slowly build towards the implosion of all of Dante's relationships. Smith's debt to do the right thing is pretty obvious, though the stakes are much lower. In Spike Lee's film, the tensions on a hot city street build to a murder and a riot, with local citizens destroying the local pizzeria where the film is set. In Clerks, tensions in a lousy New Jersey neighborhood culminate with a food fight. Bunch of savages in this town. And the employees themselves destroying their own store, before meekly setting everything back in order to work another day. Emotional progress has been made, but the system chugs along as always. Kevin Smith has said that the structure, with its Chaplin-esque interstitials, is meant to evoke the divine comedy, and naming the lead character Dante Hicks is pretty on the nose. But where Dante's pilgrim travels through the levels of hell, Clerks Dante finds the various tortures coming to him. And he lets them. Dante could at any time walk away from the store, as his friends Veronica and Randall never tire of telling him. Sure. All I'm saying is if you're that unhappy, you should leave. I'm not even supposed to be here today. But he doesn't. Dante Hicks's hell is actually a lot closer to Jean-Paul Sartre's No Exit than to the Divine Comedy, sweating away in a small, ugly room while he witnesses life carrying on outside. Hell, as Sartre says, is other people. So how much is this thing anyway? Yeah, at least we're stuck here together. You got a customer. Why? What do you want? Dante Hicks could be anything he wants, but he's too scared to take chances. So he nestles into victimhood as the best employee of a lousy convenience store. This infuriates both the women in his life, his pushy girlfriend Veronica and his saucy ex Caitlin, who both see more in Dante than he's accomplishing. Video store clerk Randall Graves, on the other hand, knows exactly where he stands. You work in a convenience store, Dante, and badly, I might add. I work in a shitty video store, badly as well. He rages against the machine like Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener, insulting and spitting water at customers, absentmindedly selling cigarettes to a child, and reading lengthy, dirty texts in front of a mom. He knows he'll eventually get fired, but title does not dictate behavior. What? Randall is Bartleby, bent on rebellion in the face of looming doom. Hey, you're not allowed to rent here anymore! Yeah! When Dante does rebel, it's on a larger scale than Randall. He shuts down the store for a hockey game on the roof, and then again for the funeral of an ex-girlfriend. But in between rebellions, Dante accommodates everyone. You always back down. You assume blame that's not yours. You come in on your day off. You buckle like a belt. His turnaround shift turns into a marathon overtime. His boss, who's supposed to relieve him, flakes, and Dante accepts it. He's desperately in love with his manipulative ex, Caitlin, but he clings to a tumultuous relationship with a strong-willed Veronica. In one of the first vignettes, a chewing gum salesman lambasts Dante for selling cigarettes. Here comes the speech about how he's just doing his job by following orders. Yeah. 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 Friends, let me tell you about another group of hate mongers that were just following orders. Who's that? They were called Nazis. Nazis. The line is over the top. 
but this movie is essentially Ferris Bueller's Day In. What happens when a couple of rebels play by the rules and show up for their day shifts? We see ourselves in Randall and Dante, but it's the cowardly, pent-up version of ourselves, not the blossoming anarchy of Ferris and Cameron Fry. Some parts of this movie have not aged well. Plenty of homophobic humor, which is portrayed as childish, but which we're expected to laugh at. Other things have aged brilliantly. I want to rent a movie. What's that for? You work in a video store. I work in a shitty video store. I want to go to a good video store so I can get a good movie. Sounds like me scanning the thousands of films on Amazon and Netflix and coming up dry. Another comic gimmick that was shocking at the time has become utterly mainstream. In 1994, movies rarely referenced real-life pop culture. Tarantino did, but it was always about his own 1970s niche fetishes. Before Clerks, brand names in movies were always generic, and movie rock bands were vanilla nothings. The characters rarely referenced any other movies because they were afraid that would take you out of this movie. But Clerks references Jaws, <laughs> Temple of Doom, no time for love, Dr. Jones. and Ooh, Navy Seals! Big Choice Video, which is obviously blockbuster, is lined with real movies on the shelves. And in a scene that at the time was just shockingly fresh, the clerks discuss the ethics of Return of the Jedi with a roofer, while an awesome song about Chewbacca plays in the background. Any contractor working on that Death Star knew the risk involved. If they got killed, it's their own fault. A roofer listens to this, not his wallet. This, of course, has become par for the course. Today, we have the Lego movie, Deadpool, anything including Tony Stark, and countless YouTubers who make absurd arguments about movies. The fourth wall has been punched into oblivion by meta jokes. But in 1994, it was novel. The real world was leaking into the movies, and it made us feel like we were in the movie, too. So here's to Clerks. Novel in its time, pretty normal now. The only movie I know that got an NC-17 initially because of language. And let's face it, a beacon of hope to slackers like me and you. Here comes Randall, he's a berserker. Na, 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 na. <laughs> You're closed.